Okay, so in this talk, we are going to consider something with union. So maybe you've seen the previous one, which was about intersections. And what do we say about intersections? Intersections of subgroups is a subgroup. Yeah, any int it could be intersection of two subgroups, or intersection of twenty subgroups. It could be intersection of infinitely many subgroups. Intersections of subgroups are always subgroups. Mm -hmm. Now, with union, sometimes a union of subgroups is a subgroup, but it's not guaranteed to be a subgroup. But what we'll see here is something even more interesting, which is that when you take a union of two subgroups, it's a subgroup only if one of them's already inside the other. Okay. Obviously, one subgroup is contained inside the other, the union will be a subgroup, right? It will be the bigger one. Mm -hmm. But what, what we are saying here is that other, if in, in no other situation, can the union be a subgroup? Okay? So it's like as far from being closed under unions as you could be. Now, we're actually going to start with proving something else, which, which will imply that, which is that if you have a subgroup, which is contained in the union of two subgroups, it actually has to be contained in one of them. Okay? That's the first line here. So you have a group G, two subgroups H and K. If L is a subgroup of G which is contained in the union of H and K, then L has to be contained in H or L has to be contained in K. Okay, so we'll, we'll actually prove this by contradiction. Then maybe you can say the proof without using contradictions. So we'll prove this one. Yeah. In contradiction. So suppose Okay, so now what we are going to do is, what I'm going to try to do is, I'm going to say, okay, L is not contained in K, right? So there is an element of L which is not an element of K, right? That's what it means to not be contained. Uh, so this is just look a little weird. So take H in L, what's the symbol for set difference? Have you seen this? This symbol for set difference. This means any something in L which is not in K. And now it's not clear why I'm writing H for the K thing, but it'll be clear in a moment. L and not in H. Okay. Now what do we know about H? Well H lives in L, right? Which means H lives in H union K. But little H doesn't live in K. So therefore, little h has to be in what? Yeah, but in per no, it has to be in h is what I'm saying. So it's in the union of these two, and it's not in this, so it has to be in this, right? So h is also in h. H is already in L. So h is in L and h is in h, but h is not in K. You see that? So H is in L by construction. I'm taking something L which is not in K. H is in H because L is in the union of these two, right? So it's in the union of these and it's not in K, which means it has to be in the other one. Okay. Okay, what about K? What's the similar statement for K? So K is in L mm -hmm. and K is not in H. Yeah. But K is the also in what? Well, do the same logic. So K is in L. L is inside the union of capital H and capital K. And it's not in H. So where does K have to be? In K. You see that? If it's a union of two sets and it's not in this one, it has to be in the other one. Right? Okay, good. Okay, now consider the product HK. Okay, now you should be able to complete. So, H and K are both in what? In yeah. which group? Yeah, L. So, therefore, 
So therefore, HK. Okay. Yeah. Now go on. So, so since H comma K are in L. Okay. Now what? We have to use this, right? L is in H union K. So what do we know? So HK is in L, which means HK is in H union K, which means what? What does it what does it mean for an element to be in a union? Either something or something, right? Yeah, what? Okay. Now I want you to get the contradiction. So I want you to get a contradiction from both possibilities. Tell me, so if HK is in H, what happens? Uh, what else do we know is in H? H. Okay. So, and what happens? Uh, K is in H. How do you get that? Well, H is a group, so K you can write as H inverse times HK, right? But what? Well, K is not in H. But we had here that K is not in H. So you get a contradiction. You get a contradiction here. Are we here? Yeah. Contradiction. Okay, good. Uh, do the other one. So, what happens if HK is in K? Then we also have H is in K. No, no. We also have what is in K? K is in K. So, oops. K is in K. So, H is in K. How would you write that? Well, you could write it HK times K inverse. But H is not in K. From here, the contradiction. Savita. What is the trick? So the the idea is, is somehow this is a we are using the group structure in this part, right? We are saying you have these three things: H, K, and H K, right? These are the three elements. What we are really using is that if two of them are in a subgroup, then the third one also has to be in the subgroup. Mm -hmm. Right? That's the idea we are using. And that really uses the inverses business of a group. Right? We are saying, uh, so you have L is in the union of H and K, and you, you basically are saying if L is not contained, not completely in one of them, then you can find stuff which is in one and not in the other. But then when you multiply them, you get a problem because that Whichever one it lands in, you get a trouble, you get into trouble with one of the pieces. Okay, now can you explain why the second thing follows from the first? Now that we've shown this thing, can you explain why this follows? Why can why does this one this line follow once you've shown this which we have can you explain why this is true? Well you have to tell me what L should be. Like what L should you set so that you can use this and conclude this. Oh Well, if H union K is a subgroup, what's the natural choice for a subgroup contained in H union K? A natural choice? Yeah. Oh, maybe it's, maybe I'm just like saying it's confusing. You just take L equal to what? H. No, H union K. 
So I'm saying you want to use oh. the this one to prove this instead of proving this again, like just using this. So I just take L equals H unit K. Okay. Now what happens? If I take L equals H unit K and I use the previous one, then what do I get? You will get. Right, it satisfies the conditions of the previous one, right? So what do you what do you get? What does this become? This becomes H. Hmm. So you just plug in H union K for L, right? So you'll uh, get what? H union K is a subset of H. Or? H union K is a subset of K. Okay. Now if H union K were a subset of H, what would that mean? It means K is a subset of H. Yeah. And if H union K were a subset of K, what would that mean? That's the same, actually, it's equivalent, yeah. Nature subset of K. Okay. So that's fine. Now, is the other direction also clear? If K is a subset of H or H is a subset of K, then obviously H un and K is just the bigger one. Mm -hmm. And so it's a subgroup, right? Mm -hmm. So, so actually, uh, this direction is obvious anyway. It's this direction which we just showed, the forward direction. That was a little hard, but that followed from this thing. Okay? Okay, great.